What are bacteria and how do they affect our food? Before we can understand how bacteria affect our food, we need to understand the term what are bacteria. So, how do we define bacteria? Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms which can exist either as independent, in other words free-living, organisms or as parasites dependent upon another organism for life. They are about 0.5 to 2 micrometers in size. To give you an idea, a grain of sand is roughly 2 millimeters in size. This means that you could fit 1,000 bacterial cells into a single grain of sand. This means that you can only see bacteria cells through a microscope. Other than through the microscope, bacteria form what we call colonies. These have millions of cells that allow us to easily see bacteria in a medium that is grown in the lab known as agar plates. This is the simplest method used in order to identify and see bacteria. We use this method to count how many bacteria are present in, for example, a swab of a cutting board, and usually greater than 300 colonies tells us that their cutting board is either dirty and contaminated or hasn't been cleaned correctly. So bacteria were one of the very first organisms to exist on our planet and are incredibly old and have coexisted with humans since the very beginning. There are million di millions of different types of bacteria, some good for us and some very bad for our health. So where do you find bacteria? Bacteria live in water, soil, in plants and in animals. Bacteria are so prominent on earth that they also live in some of the most extreme environments such as the deep ocean, hot springs and there's even evidence that bacteria live in Mars. So bacteria on a human associated level grow in our gut, on our skin and in our hair, which includes our eyelashes. So much so that recent research has shown that the makeup of different kinds of bacteria in our gut and in our skin are actually more unique than a single fingerprint. Bacteria also grow and survive in the food that we eat. So raw meats and vegetables of our design need to be correctly cooked so that we can actually consume these foods without getting sick from food poisoning. So there are two main distinctions of bacteria that we define as gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. We use this distinction to group the various types of bacteria into how they look and behave. All commonly occurring bacteria fall under these two categories. Suffice to say that we identify the bacteria in the lab using a simple test that helps us tell within a broad category which bacteria we're looking at. This test is known as a gram stain. This basically means that there are two main types of bacteria that look and behave differently from each other. With this method, we are able to see bacteria under the microscope. This test also helps us see the shape of bacteria. So there are three main shapes, rod-shaped, circular, and corkscrew shaped. So what do bacteria need to survive? There are six elements in the environment that allow bacteria to grow and survive. Temperature, moisture content, pH, nutrient content, oxygen, and time. So let's take a look at temperature. In general, and with bacteria there are always exceptions, we see that bacteria can survive in a very large temperature range. So bacteria can survive between 0 to 65 degrees Celsius. However, on a human associated level, they grow at their best between 20 and 45 degrees Celsius. This is because the bacteria that we are concerned with have adapted to our internal bodies in order to be able to infect and contaminate our bodies. Therefore, the absolute best temperature for bacteria is 37 degrees Celsius. So let's take a look at moisture or what is known as water activity. Bacteria can grow mostly in moisture rich environments. So in food, bacteria love moisture rich conditions. Water activity means how much water is available in a food product. Such an example would be cucumbers where there is a higher water availability in specifically cucumbers, lettuce and celery which is roughly about 95% water when compared to dried spices, which is between 5 and 50% water. Most bacteria need, need at least 80% water to be able to survive. Nutrient content. So we as humans, we need nutrients to survive. So do bacteria. With the nutrient content, food is a perfect source for those nutrients, which allows bacteria to grow and survive. This is why we need very good hygiene standards in the kitchen. Food is an ideal environment for bacteria. The skin of humans and animals is also a good example of high nutrient source, but essentially bacteria need carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and a large number of other minerals to be able to survive. So let's take a look at pH or acidity. The pH or acidity level also affects how bacteria grows and how effectively bacteria can survive in the environment. Bacteria in food ranges from a pH of 5 to 8. This means items such as vinegar are unlikely to allow bacteria to grow and survive. 
Lemons are also a popular food when it comes to antibacterial properties being mentioned. And indeed, the pH does discourage the growth of bacteria, but is not a major factor when killing bacteria that occurs from cross-contamination. Foods such as meat, spinach and milk are within the ideal range of which bacteria grow. Yogurt has a pH just below the ideal range and is generally considered less risky than dairy products such as milk. So let's take a look at oxygen. Bacteria can grow in both oxygen-rich and poor environments. This means sealed and unsealed products. This essentially means that vacuum-packed meals aren't free from concern for bacterial growth. This also means exposing foods to the environment and leaving foods uncovered allows bacteria to grow. Let's look at the time element. The longer bacteria are exposed to the above factors in their ideal conditions, the more established the bacterial cells become. These factors are dependent on time and can rapidly multiply within 15 to 45 minutes. Quick summary. We now know that bacteria grow and survive at temperatures between 0 to 65 degrees Celsius. However, they grow best at 20 to 45 degrees Celsius. They rapidly multiply every 15 to 45 minutes and moisture-rich conditions are favorable. Bacteria can survive at a pH of between 3 and 7.5 and can survive in oxygen-rich and poor conditions. So as you can see, bacteria are actually quite similar to humans in what they need to survive, which is why there are bacteria that are actually associated with humans and as a result, the bacteria grow in the food that we consume.